Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today we're going to be modeling up a light bulb and then we're going to be texturing up a light bulb. And it's not going to take us very long to texture it because it's just going to be some glass for the bulb and some shiny kind of material for the bottom of the light bulb. So we're going to learn some basic handy tips about modeling and a little bit about texturing. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is bringing in a reference image that we're going to be able to uh, use as a guide to make this light bulb. So hit, uh, first of all, hit Shift V on your keyboard. That'll bring up your viewport settings there and we can go into the back tab. Make sure that uh, this will be grayed out in perspective. We have to go into the view that we want to add the image to. So I'm going to add mine into the front view <clears throat> and then we can just click on this button to load in reference image I'll provide this a uh, for download in the description below okay so what I'm going to do first of all is grab my pen tool and then I'm just gonna <clears throat> draw a spline along the edge of this light bulb as best I can now I want to make sure that the first point is directly in the center and a good way of being able to do that is by just turning on um, turn on enable quantizing there and then the first uh, anchor point that we create with our pen tool is guaranteed to be right in the center because that's one of the one of the uh, things quantizing does for you so now make sure to turn that off so we'll be able to be a bit more free with our um, with the placement of our anchor anchor points and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try my best to just follow along the edge here using the pen tool Okay, so <clears throat> I'm getting close to the end of the light bulb edge here now, the glass part anyway. And I want to be able to move the Bezier handle that I'm actually interacting with now at the moment. Uh, but at the same time, I want the other Bezier handle to not move at all. So to do that, you can just hold, hold down shift and then you'll be able to drag this so that it's pointing in the direction that you want the next anchor point to go in. And then release that and then what we can do is turn back on quantizing so that we're guaranteed to get this right in the center again so i'm going to put it around there so you can kind of see that if i just grab my rectangle selection tool you can see that this um, point is at this value along the y whereas this one is not at the same value so we need those to be in the exact same position along the y and a good way of being able to do that is just by selecting them both with your rectangle selection tool, going into your scale tool, and then we can just scale this down along the Y. And it's going, it seems to be affecting our spline actually as well. So let's not do it that way. What we'll do is just select, we'll select this uh, anchor point. We'll just control C on the value there along the Y, and then we'll just paste that in for this one. So now, paste that in again and hit enter. Making sure to hit enter, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, okay, so now we have both of these points on the same position along the Y. And that's a good enough spline that we're going to be able to use to grab a lathe tool. And the lathe tool is just going to rotate this spline 360 degrees to give us our geometry for our glass part of our light bulb. So let's do that now. Quick way of being able to add this spline as a child of the lathe tool after we select it is by holding down Alt. Holding down Alt now, grab the sweep and, or I meant to grab the, uh, the lathe. And as long as you're holding Alt, it'll automatically be added. The spline will automatically be added as a child of the lathe, as long as you had it selected before you did that. Okay. So now let's have a look at what this is looking like. Hit MB in your keyboard and we can see our line. So we're going to have to increase the number of subdivisions in our lathe object. So let's do that now. Bring that right up 
something like maybe 150 should be good and go into your spline object and we can leave the intermediate point set to adaptive bring down the angle to about two degrees might go one we go two two should be fine and that's looking pretty good so now let's create a glass material for this light bulb um, so we're just going to click down here into the materials panel here let's open that up and we can call this glass we don't need color for this we do need transparency so turn that on and the refraction presets already set to glass so that's fine let's apply this glass to our lathe object and now we have you can see that our objects become transparent Okay, so we need to light up our scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a sky object and I'm going to grab a HDRI for this. Uh, so if you just open up your content browser and type in HDRI, you'll get all the H available HDRIs and we can just double click on the one we want. I'm going to go with this one. Close that down again and apply that to, to the sky object. Now, a couple of things I don't want to see the sky object in the background there so i'm going to right click go to render tags add a compositing tag and then turn off scene by camera so that solves that for us now if we hit render render preview here you can see that we're getting uh the well we didn't actually turn on global illumination we're going to do that we might leave leave it till the very end because it'll save us a bit of time but just so you can see what it looks like with global illumination turned on yeah looks pretty much the same to be honest but you're going to notice a difference once we are at the end of this so I might just turn off global illumination for now and do another rendered picture view so I don't want to see the HDRI in the refraction that's what we're seeing we're seeing it in the refraction so what we can do is go into the uh, compositing tag of the sky object and turn off scene by refraction and that solved the issue for us now we're going to be able to see better the effects of turning on global illumination. So I'll do that now, turn that on in the render settings. And now if I render the picture viewer on that, you're going to see we're getting a much nicer result. We need to open up our glass material and I'll just turn on my interactive render region. And I'm going to crank up the quality of that. We need to turn down the roughness of this glass. So go into the trend or into the reflectance channel, go to transparency, the transparency layer and turn the roughness down to like 1%, maybe even turn it all the way down. I'm going to keep mine at one just so it's not like completely perfect and leave it at that. Okay, so now we have our glass for our light bulb all set up, ready to go. We can turn on, turn off our interactive render region and just focus on the bottom part of the light bulb. This part is what I mean when I say the bottom part. So I'm going to use a cylinder for this to start us off. And I'm going to bring this down along the Y. And I'm going to increase the radius of this. And let's bring that up. I'm going to turn off enable quantizing as well because that's kind of annoying and uh, we can just kind of center this in this silver area of our light bulb reference image and just scale that up or increase the height okay so it's not perfectly lined up but it's fine for for us now um, so next I need to let's go into perspective and see what this is looking like so we're going to have to kind of bring the geometry in a bit, just like it's doing here. So what I can do is make this editable. But before I do that, I want to increase the rotation segments just to give us a bit more definition on this. And I'll increase the... No, I leave the height segments as is. Select your cylinder object, hit C in your keyboard to make it editable. And then go into your front view. <clears throat> We can use a rectangle selection now to select all those points back into perspective. And if you grab your scale tool, just scale that down. So we want to see what we're doing. So I'm going to go back into my front view, scaling that down till it's kind of uh, looking more like the shape of this uh, light bulb holder. Light bulb screw, we'll call it. Cool. 
Okay, so now we need to get this kind of this uh, spiral going on so that we'll be able to actually screw this light bulb in if it was a real light bulb. Um, so to do that, we're going to be using a volume builder. And that is here. And we're also going to need a volume measure as well. And we're going to make it the volume measure a child of the volume builder. And I'm just going to double check that. So if I go to show help, it says that. Uh, let's try volume builders show help. So it says that these objects are generally made child objects of volume generators. Okay, so actually we have this in the wrong order. It has to be the volume measure first and then the volume builder as a child of the volume measure. Okay, cool. So now we can add the cylinder here as a child of the volume builder. Well, before we do that, we might as well just create this spiral. So we're going to be using a helix <clears throat> for this. Let's set the plane to be XZ. I'm just going to bring that down along the Y. And I need to in or decrease the end radius to about something like this. The end, the end angle, I, I should say. <clears throat> and the same on the uh, start radius. Oh, sorry. The end radius set to this and the same on the start radius. Okay, so I'm just going to scale the whole thing up a little bit so I can actually see it. And we need to increase the end angle on this. Something like that. I'm going to create a camera so that I know what, which way we're going to be looking at this so I can see how much I need to um, increase the end angle on this helix by. So create a camera, <clears throat> go into the coordinates tab and just zero everything out. And I'm just going to bring this back to about minus 2000 on the, on the Z. Cool. So now we can focus on this helix again. Um, let's increase the end angle. No, let's increase the start angle. So we're getting something like that. Let's put a protection tag on our camera object as well. You're gonna have to excuse um, my Cinema 4D software for misbehaving at the moment. It's just happening because I'm screen recording. So let's put that protection on and now we're not gonna be able to move our camera no matter how hard we try. We can deactivate it and we can have a look at this. So that's looking good to go. Okay, so we need to create some geometry using this helix spline. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna grab a sweep object now I can hold down Alt so that the helix object, which is selected, will be automatically added as a child of the sweep once I release there. And then we're going to have to grab a circle spline that we're going to add as a child of the sweep, making sure the circle spline is above the helix in the hierarchy. Let's bring down the radius of this to something like that. And now I'm just going to deactivate my camera to see how this is all looking. So I might bring down the radius of this circle a bit more. And I might just grab the whole sweep and just bring it up a bit. Okay, cool. So now we're going to be using our volume measure volume builder. Let's just bring this up to the top for no particular reason. And I'm bringing that down there for no particular reason. Now, for a reason, I'm going to add the cylinder as a child of the volume builder. And I'm also going to add the sweep as a child of the volume builder. And I'm going to go into the volume builder and I'm going to have a look at what we have in our objects list. So right now the sweep is on top of the cylinder, which is good. And it's already kind of doing what we want it to do. It's giving us that spiral um, effect, but it's doing it in the wrong way. We need to set the sweep mode here to be subtract. So now it's looking much better. Voxel size here, we can bring this down to one, maybe two. 
let's turn off our lines so we can see this a bit more. Uh, let's go into, well, let's create one of these, uh, let's add one of these SDF smooth um, objects here. And that's going to smoothen everything out for us. So you can see we're having a bit of an issue here uh, because our helix is just stopping there. So what we can do is just increase possibly the end radius or the end angle, the end angle possibly. Yeah. So that's kind of fixed that for us. It's just hiding it behind the, the uh, area that we can see. Now, obviously, if we we're going to be using this in an animation, this wouldn't do. So if you do want to use this in an animation, just increase the end angle even further until that's no longer visible. You might just have to bring the sweep up. Something like that. We're getting it here as well. So we can go back into our helix and increase the height of that. And maybe bring that down along the Y, the whole sweep. Make sure the whole sweep is selected. And that's looking much better. Back into my camera now. And we can do a render to picture viewer on this for a treat. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, we just need to create a material for this bottom part of our light bulb. And then I think we're good to go. Uh, so I'm going to add a new material. I'll just double click in the material panel. Add it to the volume measure. Let's open that up and we can turn, go into our reflectance channel, turn off default specular, and let's add in a CGX. And we can bring down the reflection strength to something like that. Roughness we can leave as is, and specular strength we can maybe bring it down a bit. Do a rendered picture viewer on that and see what that's looking like. So it's probably a bit too shiny looking, the, the, it's probably a bit too reflective. So I'm going to bring down the reflection even more on that and the specular as well. I'm bringing down even more. Have a look at that now. Okay, so obviously we're having some problems with our reflections on the light bulb. And the reason for that is this edge is way too straight. So we just need to get a bit of a curve going on the edge. So let's grab the spline that we used to create this uh, with the lathe and we can hop into the front view. We don't need to see this uh, background image anymore. So hit shift V in your keyboard and then just go into the back tab, turn that off. So let's get our rectangle selection tool, go into point mode and then we can just kind of grab Maybe this point here. We could do it with this one as well, but I'll try it with this one. Just to get a bit of a curve going on this straight edge. So grab your pen tool and then we have to just slightly curve that. Like that. And we'll see what that looks like now. So previously it looked like this. Now that we've put a bit of curve on the edge of the glass, it's looking a lot better. Okay, so all in all, it's not looking too bad. I mean, we're getting some jagged edges in the reflections here. Easy fix for that is just to turn or to set up our anti-alias and setting. Set that to best, leave it at one by one, four by four. And that is it, guys. So hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next video.